So JP Morgan had this heavy interest in blockchain technology and they had built an internal group to explore and experiment with it. And they rapidly identified this need for privacy and confidentiality. They eventually came to us and said, we're interested in, in exploring the zero knowledge proof based solution further. So we agreed to enter into a technology partnership with them. And we added the technology that underpins privacy and Zcash to JP Morgan's blockchain distributed ledger solution, which is called Quorum. And we did that as a proof of concept last year um, to demonstrate A, that it could be done, and, um, and B, to, to then have something that could be used in an in a, in a experimental you know, proof of concept type, type environment to, to experiment with different use cases and so on. Um, and that, I think, has yielded a lot of learnings, both for us and for them. For us, it's given us some ideas that we can then take back and, uh, and look at applying to, to Zcash um, about different use cases or features and functionality that can enable, can enable different use cases. And for, for JP Morgan and the other members of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance who, who also you know, benefit from, from that work, it's um, given them some, con instead of this idea of zero knowledge proofs being this solution, but never actually having their hands on it and seeing how it works, it's given them hands-on experience with it. Um, and they appear to like it and to be interested in, in pursuing it further. So I think blockchain distributed ledger technology solves two problems in the traditional financial markets. The first one is that in order to discover um, counterparties when you're trading, you currently have to go to a centralized trading environment. The people who operate those centralized environments, whether they're exchanges or multilateral trading facilities or brokers, they inevitably extract economic rent from, from, from their users. If you can disintermediate those centralized parties, those trusted third parties effectively, then you can save money. When you get rid of centralization and when you get, when you get rid of those uh, middlemen, then costs go down. The second aspect that I think is attractive is the idea that there is a single record that is shared amongst the parties to, to a transaction or a trade. Currently in, in, in financial markets, um, what we call trade breaks are a big source of cost. Somebody decides that the trade happened using six-month LIBOR, somebody else records it as being three-month LIBOR. And there's then the cost of having to figure out what was actually said on the phone or what was actually written in the email or the message and then correcting what whichever system happens to be wrong. If you have a single ledger that everybody um, uses, then you get rid of those, of those trade breaks and you have a single source of truth. I think the technology is still relatively immature, but we're operating on a timescale that's similar to what the internet timescale was back during the dot-com boom when things were accelerated. And I think that it's evolving and it's maturing very, very quickly. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing it being deployed in real you know, production environments within the next 12 to 18 months. There, there's no doubt that, that it is a young technology and it is evolving and it's going to look very, very different in a few years' time to what it looks like today. Some of the problems that we think are insurmountable today, like scalability and efficiency, I think will get solved. I'm not sure how they're going to get solved, but my experience of dealing with technology over the past 25 years tells me that it advances quicker often than you, that, than you would expect.